everyone. One, a very warm welcome to every one of you out there. It's Wednesday, uh, the 18th day of uh, January 2012. Of course, welcome to the show. It's the Money Show coming to you live on African Independent Television, AIT, from the nation's capital. Of course, Abuja, I am Nancy. Thank you for joining us again uh, today. Uh, the last time we were on was on Monday, isn't it? And today we are on again, taking you through uh, the world of uh, business, finance, and economy in the past few days. Of course, since January the 9th, we've been following what's been happening in the economy as it concerns fuel subsidy removal. On Monday that we were here, we talked about uh, the president um, in his broadcast on a Monday morning by 7 a.m. His seven minutes broadcast uh, told Nigerians that the fuel pump price has been dropped from about 141 naira to 97 naira per liter and quite a whole lot of people have been uh, responding to that of course uh, uh, an aftershoot of that was a uh, labor uh, suspending uh, the strike and calling all nigerians to go back to work so as it is right now uh, the economic shutdown that we experienced last a week has uh, come to a halt now we're seeing businesses being opened. The banks uh, yesterday, as we, uh, yesterday were filled to uh, the brim. Most of the ATMs uh, in the banking premises or even outside the banking premises were short of money uh, during the uh, striking uh, period. Now the economy is up again. Um, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Iwala, the Minister of Finance, uh, said on Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, that the economy has lost about 500 billion naira daily. But some economists um, say that the, the Nigerian economy lost about 720 billion naira. But the finance minister said that amount was lost because our eastern, southeastern brothers, as well as our brothers from the south south, were actually doing their business as usual. Of course, if you go over at the Niger, taking the Niger Bridge, you cross over into Onicha, and our Onicha brothers were really trading. So she actually quantified the loss to the Nigerian economy at about 500 billion naira. But the answer for me in all of this is that Nigeria still lost money. However, you look at it. All right, we'll continue to discuss this morning. You know, last week on the show, I actually said on the program while uh, chatting with Imoni Amari that this is more of economy than politics, but we see some uh, politicians are uh, trying to come into all of this, but it's still an economic uh, question. And what we will be discussing this morning is the fuel subsidy uh, debate. What's next now uh, for Nigeria? Will this begin to reposition Nigeria's economy to be one of the best in Africa, not just a population, not just a population giant, but an economic giant in the truest sense of it all. Joining me right now is Tokwe Fashua, the CEO at Global Analytics, as well as an economist and uh, an author. I think I'm beginning to put that to Tokwe because it's not easy to write. <laughs> <laughs> I must, <laughs> I must tell you that. <laughs> all right, Absolutely. thank you very much, Mr. Fashua, for joining us on the show this morning. Good morning man. Uh, it's a pleasure having you again. You know, anytime you come on the program, uh, the kind of comments that we get. The last time you were here with Chika Mozuzu, uh, you actually pricked our minds. Like I said that a very day last Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, that you were here, I actually said I was, tr I was almost losing my senses in all of this. <laughs> yes, I was almost losing my senses in all of this happening. What, what, what's next? What's next? What do we do? But you were able to put in some perspectives. All right, uh, we'll, we'll start this morning. Um, you were here last Wednesday, and you and Mr. Moses actually brought out some key uh, things that we should be looking at as a country. The Monday broadcast by Mr. President, several minutes broadcast, um, and the calling off or the suspension of the strike, however you look at it, by Labour and the TUC, uh, is, are we actually uh, seeing a new turning right now? Were you convinced? What's your conviction about that? Hmm. Thanks for the question. Uh, well, I, I think uh, um, no matter how we slice and dice, it's something very momentous happened in, the, uh, in Nigeria last week and uh, perhaps uh, coming from week before last. Mm, and uh, what we saw was a sort of rapproche more in, in terms of uh, the president uh, coming up with that statement. Uh, things had gotten to a head as at that time that it required the president himself to come and make that speech and to reveal what they had uh, by way of a compromise for us. Of course, 
a lot of people have said, no, it's, that's where they were working to in the first place. Uh, I think for several reasons, I think uh, that what this time around it was different. Uh, and some of the reasons I have, if you look at the, um, if you look at the kind of advert that uh, were brought out as at that time to sell the uh, total deregulation, you could see that some of them were, they range from the malicious to the outright, uh, you know, uh, give me the word, you know, uh, because uh, invariably you could see that the people who were behind the uh, total deregulation, who wanted us to just take it as it was and move on, quote and unquote, uh, were ready to sell that policy and carry it through. Uh, and uh, we, there are so many lessons in management, in lessons in leadership that we could see. It was obvious to me that, as, as I had said here uh, this time last week, you know, it's not everything that the president is actually aware of. Uh, so, so to speak, maybe the leader of a corporate organization as well. And so you depend a whole lot on the people around you, on your left hand, and say, look, what, what's... And so someone must have gone to the president and say, oh, we can sell this thing. And no worries, we've got this allocation of this money somewhere to run a, 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 an advert bleed. On, 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 in the newspaper, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the news media like yours and so on and so forth. But we found out that if Nigerians had not spoken up, uh, they could have carried it through. The reason why we're talking about a midpoint now, which is a face saving for government, and uh, not too bad for the people. Well, really, uh, a lot of the prices that have gone up have not come down, uh, it must be said. Uh, the reason why we're doing that is because people spoke up, people went out. And uh, I, I say again that uh, really it's a shame to those who said that people should not have gone out in the first place. For the first time, we set a lesson and, a, you know, a, 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 we set a record in democracy in Africa and perhaps even in the world that we had more than two, three million people outside in this country and they did not resort to looting shops. Uh, they did not resort to destruction of properties. And the government itself had its policemen out. They had the army out in most of the locations. And the army did not, or the police did not take law into their hands to start shooting people. Uh, I, I came back to this country on the 6th of, of, uh, 6th or 7th, 6th of, uh, of, of, of January. On Saturday, 7th, I was out uh, to, in the, uh, you know, I was out. Uh, to join some of the, that, that time it was still a pocket of protest and I, I met Dino, Dino Melai and co at, uh, at, around the secretariat, you know. And uh, the, nec the next day, uh, I mean by Monday, it had turned to something else and everybody was out. By Tuesday I was out again. I saw the, I saw the soldiers, I saw the police, I saw, and the, some of them, the kind of instruments they had. Uh, I was, my fear was, look, I hope nobody will go crazy because you could have a massacre on your hands. But they needed to do that in order to protect the security of the country, the, the sovereignty of the country. And, um, and it's commendable. We must commend them. And we must commend the president for also listening and, and coming to a sort of middle ground. Now, uh, a lot of people have said, no, we didn't get 65. That means we failed. Uh, see, uh, the failure is in the mind. If we could, if people could mobilize and people came out. When I went out on Tuesday, I saw a lot of my friends who have good jobs, but they were out. I asked one of them the question, big man, what are you doing here? He said, look, I'm here because of my children. And people spoke and the government listened, in my view, in my very strong opinion, uh, because it could have turned the other way around. And now it's not only the 97 whatever middle ground we got, but we've got a number of probes, a lot of revelations. I was reading some of the newspapers this morning saying, oh, the customs disagreed with the Minister of uh, Petroleum. Uh, this happened, that happened. And we're beginning to see. And I want to tell you that it, Nigerians should not, uh, they should not co commit the same offense that they accuse their government and their so-called leaders of. The, 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 the scene of giving up too early, okay? The, the scene of lack of vision. Because if we as people lack vision in terms of what we can achieve with the kind of mobilization that happened in the last few, in the last week or so, then we have failed ourselves. We don't have the right, not even we have the right to give up on Nigeria or to give up on ourselves as individuals. So if we got a 50% uh, uh, middle ground, for example, Doesn't and we say it's not good enough. Yeah. Okay, you know, you say, well, it's not good enough. You see, when you have a wrestling match, it's not when you kill your opponent that you've won. If you put us back to the ground and the referee counts one, two, three, which in my opinion happened last week between the Nigerian people and the government, and for, for once, so we, if we, the people, gave government the feedback that it required to have. 
we, that feedback would not have been gotten by, from perhaps some of the most important ministers that were surrounding the president. That is the truth. And the man was in a quandary. When you saw those people on the street, one million people were out in Lagos. And people were asking, how come there was no CNN, no Al Jazeera, no BBC? They were never covered, no Sky, no Fox, no nothing. You know, they were never covered by the international media. This is essentially a Nigerian thing. It's only the AITs that were there, the channels that were there. It's only Nigerians that were speaking up. When you have a long, drawn-out conflict, which people wanted it to turn out to be, we're not going to be here speaking this grammar that we're speaking this morning. Seriously speaking. <laughs> if it went on, the United States had instructed all its citizens to leave Nigeria by the 20th of this month, which is Friday, if that strike continued. When the USA says all the citizens should leave a country, you should be afraid, very afraid. Because the next thing is you're going to be seeing bombs and all sorts of things dropping. Now, the, the way it is, why did the CNN, BBC, Fox, Al Jazeera, Sky, all those people, why did they not cover what went on in Lagos, in the, in the Freedom Square in Lagos? Why did they not cover most of what? She, why would they focus on only the bad aspect of the news? Oh, police, police has shot someone. Why did they not cover that? Which someone said the crowd in, in Garimfahami Square in Lagos was 10 times what they had in Tahrir Square in Egypt. But there was no interest for them there. That's the thing, see, until we get wise as a people. Because most times we think that when, when those people don't give us the stamp of approval in what we're doing, then that means we haven't done anything. They will only come when it becomes a long drawn out conflict and people are selling guns from the back to one side and selling guns to the other side. And then the protesters will transmute into dissident, dissident will transmute into rebels, rebels will transmute into revolutionaries. By then, we won't be here speaking this grammar. As at that time last week, we had seen the South-South people, some of them had come out. Uh, Asari Kubo was out issuing all sorts of uh, threats to the rest of us. Even poor me one, I was thinking, God, when are we going to get out of this problem whereby the rest of us who probably don't have uh, crude oil in our backyard are seen as, as pests and as, as parasites to those who have crude oil? They had said that if Pengasan made the starting move, they were going to cover and they were going to chase them out and they would never allow them to return to the platform. And they did make, they made through some of the threats. They moved. The, uh, uh, some dissidents from the East said, look, this is the time to, to actualize Biafra once again. And, of course, a lot of Udua people in Southwest also said, look, it is the time to go. And someone like Professor Shibwale Shenka was saying Nigeria was going to enter civil war, which I take serious exception with, because as the only Nobel Prize winner in this country, it shouldn't be seen to join issues with, with Boko Haram and Lamajiris, for crying out loud. It's an intellectual thing. 